part two of David's Farm Automotive Mythbusters cooling systems. Well, of course, every car and vehicle's got one. Unless it's an old VW air-cooled, it's got a radiator. Radiators contain antifreeze and water mixed together. The reason being, first, antifreeze prevents the water from being corrosive. And since most engine blocks are made of cast iron, that stops your antifreeze, I mean, or your water in your system from turning orange and getting all cloudied up. Antifreeze in your water makes your water or coolant boil at a higher temperature, like 15 or 20 degrees higher temperature, so that's better too, so your car is less likely to overheat and boil over, and engines like to run fairly warm. It makes them more fuel efficient. And also, of course, when it's mixed approximately 50-50, it prevents the liquid from freezing when it's very cold. Antifreeze never wears out. So if it hasn't been contaminated or polluted with anything, you haven't added water to it. And if it looks clean, and you can see through it quite well or hasn't changed color, it's probably still perfectly fine. It, like I said, it will be the same as it was five years ago. If you're not sure, this is something like a hygrometer for a battery. It's, it just checks its weight and gives you a scale of when it would freeze. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. You just stick this in your antifreeze or in your radiator opening and fill it all the way to the top. So you let the air out, squeeze it again, stick it back in, and it'll give you an idea of how strong your antifreeze is. If it just needs a little added, just go to the bleed screw that's probably underneath your radiator twist it out, drain a little bit into a container and safely store it or dispose of it and add some more antifreeze. The stuff in this car is the pink antifreeze called long life antifreeze. General Motors has not had very good luck with that stuff and other car companies too. I kind of think it's more corrosive. Seems to eat those nylon intake gaskets that GM shouldn't have never used. Also eats head gaskets too. It'd be my advice just to put the regular old green stuff in and maybe have less problems in the future. Sometimes your cooling system seems to want to overheat even though everything seems normal. You got enough fluid, the mixture's right, the water pump's working, the fan's working. Well what can happen is all those little tubes in the radiator or tubes in your heater core behind your dash get clogged with deposits. It looks like calcium deposits. Very well could be. It's like this creamy colored whitish stuff and it blocks all those little passageways and makes your cooling system very ineffective. So your fan will be on blazing away, blowing out air, but the air blowing out isn't very warm because it's not dissipating heat. On so many cars, the antifreeze overflow bottle isn't in a position where it's higher than the radiator like this vehicle, and the radiator has a rad cap on it. Well, if there's a cap on the bottle and a cap on the rad, it's pretty sure that this system doesn't have a flow tube that goes into filling up the rad. So whenever you're checking your coolant, you've got to check the bottle and the radiator. And if you want to top it up, uh, <laughs> the stuff you put in the bottle won't end up in the radiator. So you have to top up the radiator first, and then put some in the bottle. On this particular vehicle, it's the highest point and there is no cap on the rad. So you fill it up from there and wait. You're waiting because you don't want to be confused and think your system's full and then drive away with air still in the system, which of course is accumulated around the head. And the head is the easiest part of your engine to crack if it overheats. When the engine's cool, the thermostat is closed. And when the thermostat's closed, it stops the flow of fluid through the engine just even by gravity. So air, of course, always collects at the top. And of course, the liquid is heavier than air, so it always starts to fill the system up from the bottom up. Well, the air has to eventually find its way out, and it finds its way out the top of the radiator, or in this situation, the way this vehicle is plumbed, out through the overflow bottle. Some thermostats, when they're closed, like when the engine's in cold situation, they don't allow any air to bleed through. So you have to go through a different process, and sometimes almost overheating your motor to try to get the thermostat to open, just to get it to burp the air out so you can add the correct amount of coolant. 
That's not good. I've seen some people crack the heads on engines that have sensitive heads while just trying to fill up their engine with antifreeze because it takes so long in that situation. I like the more advanced thermostats that have a little tiny hole drilled in them or a little tiny floating pin in this hole that allows a little bit of air to bleed out just so that when you are retopping up the coolant it can self bleed itself while the coolant's flowing in. On cars that have one of these thermostats that just don't allow any air to pass through and you can't get your coolant to go in quickly and you want to work with a cold motor, the best thing to do is disconnect the heater hose or some other tube in the system pull that hose up and snake it upwards and just put a funnel on it and pour the coolant in that way and that'll bypass every other way of putting the coolant in and the air will come out no problem if you're ever just driving down the road and all of a sudden your heater stops blowing hot and everything else seems normal first thing you do is look at your temperature gauge most likely you ran low on coolant because there's a leak for some reason or the belt flipped off that drives the water pump so quickly pull over and check things out and don't drive again till you've found some source of liquid to put back in that radiator. Antifreeze, it's true, is a type of alcohol. Brake fluid is a type of alcohol. It's just like one of the types of alcohol like the stuff I like to drink. It's just a different type. It has a sweet taste but it's very poisonous and uh, certainly don't leave your coolant laying around because your cat, dog, raccoon or anything would may be tempted to drink it and have instant liver damage and die within the same day. Another myth is if your temperature gauge is near the top it's overheating or if it's almost near that red mark. You know your car is not actually overheating until it starts boiling and once a coolant or a liquid starts boiling it can't get any hotter so until the level goes down and the head is completely out of the coolant zone then engine damage can happen but before that it's perfectly fine so if the overflow bottle isn't flowing over while it's boiling you don't have to worry when it cools back down it'll suck it all back in some people think the engine cooling fan should be on all the time when the engine's running no it only comes on if, if it needs to at the last minute the temperature gauge has to get almost to the red mark before it even is necessary to turn on. But it should turn on when the air conditioning is on because that creates the flow through the condenser. A good way to test your cooling system, at least the thermostat, is if your engine is running and it's not incredibly hot, like just at a normal operating temperature, the engine should feel quite hot to the touch and you should barely be able to hold your hand on there for very long. And the rad should be cool or just a little bit warm. Because as the engine is running in normal circumstances, when it's not being stressed, the thermostat is just opening and closing or staying open just a tiny bit, only allowing as much fluid as necessary to the radiator to keep the engine at the temperature required for the most efficient operation. When thermostats break, they most often break in open position, which is good. That means it's going to save your engine from overheating. Uh, if you're trying to figure out why your engine's not heating up your car enough for the heating system, very first thing I do is run it for a short while and check to see that the engine's warm of course and the rad should still be cold. If the engine and radiator are always the same temperature when you touch them it's most likely a stuck open thermostat so it's time to change it so you can get some heat in your car. If your thermostat happens to break in the closed position which is rare then of course your engine gets pretty hot and your radiator always stays cool but your heat in your car works amazing. <laughs> Better change that one quick. Sometimes your cooling system seems to be working great. Gauge always shows the right amount. Your fan in your car works, but your heat inside isn't working well. It's set to max, but there's never very much warm air coming out of the vents. I mean, the air is coming out. It's just not hot. Well, heater cores easily plug up. They have smaller passageways in the radiator, and they get clogged with that same gungy, creamy colored stuff. Uh, you can change your heater core to fix that, or in another video, I'll show you how to unclog heater cores while leaving them installed. It's a dirty job, but sure helps. If you're having a difficult time, like I mentioned before, re-adding antifreeze back to your engine because you feel it's got air locks, which very well could, some engines on the highest point have a little bleeder screw. It's usually sort of a stainless steel color. You just loosen it and remove it, and you just keep adding fluid wherever you're supposed to until it keeps burping out the air bubbles until you keep a constant flow of fluid coming out that hole. On this particular car, it's got a bleeder tube that goes right there. That's better than the earlier models. 
like I said before, coolant doesn't wear out. So don't be tricked by commercials and garages advertising that you need to come in and get your coolant changed or your coolant flushed. If your temperature gauge is always at the right spot, your heat is working well, you've looked at the fluid and it's quite clean looking, and you've checked it with that hygrometer thing, well then don't bother. Just keep driving until something changes. When your engine is overheating, the most likely thing to happen first is head damage or a warped head or a cracked head. This doesn't very often happen with cast iron heads, but most modern cars have aluminum heads and they're very sensitive and there's some engines that are more sensitive to others. If you've overheated your engine at one point in time and from then on every time you add coolant it seems to build up pressure in the rad too quick or have that extra white smelly smoke that comes out the exhaust or it just keeps like, mysteriously losing coolant afterwards, it's probably not the head gasket. It's likely a cracked head. They usually crack between the valves. It can be a crack all along or just in one cylinder. Or it's a warped head causing the coolant and the pressure to get around, thus eventually damaging the head gasket. So sometimes you'll just pull the engine apart, throw another head gasket on, put it all back together. Same problem. Cracked head or warped head still causing leakage. Next is block heaters. And you see that little orange thing with the wire running out of it. It could be at a hard to get spot at the back or at the front like this. It's an easy one. Well, in very cold climates where it gets colder than minus 25 or minus 30 Celsius, you may need a block heater on a gas engine. But like around here, it almost never gets colder than minus 30, so it's pretty rare you would actually have to use a block heater. It's just a waste of energy. If it is that cold and snowy and you are using your block heater regularly, it's not necessary to leave it on all night. They draw about 14 or 1500 watts of energy, so that's quite expensive. It's best to buy one of those timer devices and plug your block heater into that and set it to come on two, two and a half hours before you need to start your car in the mornings or whenever. Well, that's enough of that subject. Next lesson's on oils and lubricants for your car some of the mysteries around that and what is true and not. Keep watching. And one more and one more very important tip to remember if your car is ever running too hot just turn the heater all the way up fan the full blast and drive like that. And I mean even if it's in the summer turning your heater on gives you about 20 percent more cooling capacity for your engine. Don't forget